जय श्री कृष्णा श्रीमद भगवद गीता समरी ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर वन ऑब्जर्विंग द आर्मीज ऑन द बैटल फील्ड ऑफ कुरुक्षेत्र टू आर्मीज दोज ऑफ द पांडवाज एंड खारवास फेस ही चदर ऑन द बैटल फील्ड ऑफ कुरुक्षेत्र मैनी साइंस इंडिकेट विक्ट्री फॉर द पांडवास धृतराष्ट्र द पांडवास अंकल एंड द खारवास फादर डाउट्स द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ हिज सन्स विक्ट्री एंड एक्स संजय हिज सेक्रेटरी टू डिस्क्राइब द सीन ऑन द बैटल फील्ड अर्चना वन ऑफ द फाइव पांडवास ब्रदर्स अंडर ग्रोज अ क्राइसिस जस्ट बिफोर द फाइट ही इज ओवर फाउंड बाय कंपैशन फॉर हिज फैमिली मेम्बर्स एंड टीचर्स होम ही इज सपोज टू किल आफ्टर सबमिटिंग बिफोर कृष्णा मैनी नोबल एंड मोरल रीजन्स वाई ही विश इज नॉट टू फाइट अर्जुना कैस असाइड हिज वेपन्स ओवर फाउंड with grief Arjuna's reluctance to fight indicates his kind heart such a person is fit to receive transcendental knowledge Jai Shri Krishna Shrimad Bhagavad Gita The summary of chapter number 2 the contents of the Gita summarized Krishna does not sympathize with Arjuna's arguments rather he reminds Arjuna that his duty is to fight and orders him to overcome his weakness of heart Arjuna is torn between the aversion to killing his relatives and Krishna's desire that he should fight aggrieved and confused Arjuna asks Krishna for guidance and becomes his disciple Krishna takes up the role of Arjuna's spiritual master and teaches him that the soul is eternal and cannot be killed. Dying in battle promotes a fighter to the heavenly planets. So Arjuna should rejoice that those persons he is about to kill will achieve superior births. A person is eternally an individual. only his body perishes thus there's nothing to lament arjuna's decision not to fight is based on his desire to enjoy life with his relatives even at the cost of wisdom and duty such a mentality keeps one bound to the material world krishna advises arjuna to engage in buddhi yoga work without attachment to the results by fighting in this way arjuna will free himself from the cycle of birth and death and become eligible to enter the kingdom of god jay shri krishna jay shri krishna shrimad bhagavad gita the summary of chapter number 3 karm yoga Arjuna is still confused he thinks that buddhi yoga means that one should retire from active life and practice penance and austerities but Krishna says no fight but do it in a spirit of renunciation and offer all the results to the supreme this is a best purification by working without attachment one attains the supreme performing sacrifices for the pleasure of the lord guarantees material prosperity and freedom from the sinful reactions even a self-realized person never gives up his duty he acts for the sake of educating others Arjuna then asks the lord what it is that causes one to engage in sinful acts Krishna answers that it is lust 
which induces one to sin. This lust bewilders one and entangles one in the material world. Lust presents itself in the senses, mind and intelligence, but it can be counteracted by self-control. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter No. 4, Transcendental Knowledge, Summary. The science of Bhagavad Gita was first spoken by Krishna to Vivaswan, the sun god. Vivaswan taught the science to his descendants, who taught it to humanity. And this system of transmitting knowledge is called disciplic succession. Wherever and whenever there is a decline in religion and a rise of irreligion, Krishna appears in his original transcendental form, untouched by material nature. One who understands the transcendental nature of the Lord attains the Lord's eternal abode at the time of death. Everyone surrenders to Krishna directly or indirectly and Krishna reciprocates according to one's surrender. Krishna created a system called Varn Ashrama with divisions of social and spiritual life to engage people according to their psychophysical natures by sacrificing the results of work to the supreme people gradually rise to the platform of transcendental knowledge ignorant and faithless people who doubt the revealed knowledge of the scriptures can never be happy nor attain god consciousness jai krishna Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Chapter Number Fifth, Summary, Karma Yoga, Action in Con- Krishna's Consciousness. Arjuna is still confused about what is better, renunciation of work or work in devotion. Krishna explains that devotion service is better. Since everything belongs to Krishna, nothing is one's own to renounce. Thus, whatever one possesses, one should use in Krishna's service. A person working in such consciousness is renounced. This process, called karma yoga, helps one escape the results of fruitive action, entanglement in rebirth. One who works in devotion with his mind and senses control is in divine consciousness. Although his senses are engaged with sense objects, he is aloof, situated in peace and happiness. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Summary of chapter number 6. Dhyan Yoga. The process of mystic yoga entails cessation of material activities. Yet, the true mystic is not he who performs no duty. A real yogi works according to duty, without attachment to results or a desire for sense gratification. Real yoga entails meeting the supreme soul within the heart and following his dictation. This is achieved with the help of a controlled mind. Through knowledge and realization, one becomes unaffected by the dualities of material existence, that is, heat and cold, honor and dishonor, etc. By regulation of eating, sleeping, work, and recreation, the yogi gains control over his body, mind and activities and becomes 
steady in his meditation on the transcendent self. Ultimately, he achieves samadhi, characterized by the ability to relish transcendental pleasure through transcendental sense. The highest yogi is he who always thinks of Krishna, the supreme soul. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Summary of chapter number 7th. Knowledge of the Absolute. Krishna reveals himself as the origin of all material and spiritual energies. Although his energy manifests material nature with three states of being goodness, passion and ignorance. Krishna is not under material control. But everyone else is except those who have surrendered unto him. Krishna is the essence of everything. The taste of water, the heat in fire, the sound in ether, the light of the sun and the moon, the ability in man, the original fragrance of the earth, the intelligence of the intelligent and the life of all that lives. Four types of men surrender to Krishna and four types don't. Those who do not surrender remain covered by Krishna's temporary illusionary potency and can never know him. But pious people become eligible for surrender to devotional service. Among them, those who understand that Krishna is that cause of all causes engage in devotional service with the great determination and become dear to Krishna. These rare souls are sure to attain Him. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Summary of chapter number 8. Attaining the Supreme. Arjuna asks Krishna seven questions. What is Brahma? What is Self? What are fruitive activities? What is material manifestation? Who are demigods? Who is the lord of sacrifice? And how can those engaged in devotional service know Krishna at the time of death? Krishna replies, Brahma refers to the indestructible living entity, that is Jiva, the Self, refers to the soul's intrinsic nature of service and the fruitive activities means action that develop material bodies. The material manifestation is the ever-changing physical nature. The demigods and their planets are part of the universal form of the Supreme Lord. And the Lord of Sacrifice is Krishna himself as the Super Soul. As for knowing Krishna at the time of death, it depends on one's consciousness. The principle is this. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits the, his body, that state he will attain without fail. Krishna says, Whoever at the end of life quits his body remembering me alone, at once attains my nature without a doubt. Therefore, my dear Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. During each day of Brahma, all living entities become manifest. And during his night, they merge into the unmanifested nature. Although 
there are auspicious and inauspicious times for living one's body. Devotees of Krishna do not care about them. For by engaging in pure devotional service to Krishna, they automatically attain all the results derived from studying the Vedas or engaging in sacrifice, charity, philosophically speculation, and so on. Such pure devotees reach the Lord's supreme eternal abode. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Summary of chapter number 9th. The most confidential knowledge. According to Lord Krishna, the most confidential knowledge, knowledge of devotional service, is the purest knowledge and the topmost education. It gives direct perception of the self by realization and it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting and joyful performed. Krishna's unmanifested form pervades everything, but Krishna himself remains detached from matter, material nature, working under his direction, produces all moving and non-moving beings. Krishna's unmanifested form pervades everything, but Krishna himself remains detached from matter, material nature, working under his direction, produces all moving and non-moving beings. Different worshippers reach different goals. Men who want to attain the heavenly planets worship the demigods and then take birth among them to enjoy godly delights. But such men, after exhausting their pious credits, return to earth Men who worship ancestors go to the planets of ancestors. And those who worship ghosts become ghosts. But one who worships Krishna with exclusive devotion goes to him forever. Whatever Krishna's devotee does, eats, offers or gives away in charity, he does as an offering unto the Lord. Krishna reciprocates by caring what his devotee lacks and preserving what he has. By taking shelter of Krishna, even low-born people can attain the supreme destination. Jai Shri Krishna Jai Shri Krishna Srimad Bhagavad Gita Summary of chapter number 10, the opulence of the absolute. Devotees know Krishna as the unborn, the beginningless, the supreme lord of all words, the creator of the patriarchs, from whom all living beings descend, the origin of everything. Intelligence, knowledge, truthfulness, mental and sensory control, fearlessness, non-violence, austerity, birth, death, fear, distress, infamy, all qualities, good and bad, are created by Krishna. Devotional service helps one develop all good qualities. The devotees who lovingly engage in devotional service, have full faith in Krishna's opulences, mystic power and supremacy. The thoughts of such devotees dwell in Krishna. Their lives are devoted to his service and they derive great bliss and satisfaction by enlightening one another and conversing about him. Devotees engaged in pure devotional service, even if lacking education or knowledge of the Vedic principles, 
they are helped from within by Krishna, who personally destroys the darkness born out of ignorance. Arjuna has realized Krishna's position as the supreme personality of Godhead, the ultimate abode and the absolute truth, the purest, the transcendental and the original person, the unborn, the greatest, the origin and the lord of and the lord of all. Now Arjuna wants to know more. Lord Krishna tells more and then concludes. All opulent, beautiful and glorious creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Summary of chapter number 11th. The Universal Form. To protect innocent people from imposters, Arjuna asks Krishna to prove his divinity by exhibiting his universal form, a form that anyone who claims to be God should be prepared to show. Krishna gives Arjuna divine vision by which to see the brilliant, glaring, unlimited universal form which reveals in one place everything that ever was or now is or will be. Arjuna offers obeisance with folded hands and glorifies the Lord. Krishna then reveals that except for the five Pandvas, all the soldiers assembled on the battlefield will be killed. Therefore, Krishna exhorts Arjuna to fight as his instrument and guarantees him victory and a flourishing kingdom. Arjuna requests Krishna to withdraw his fearful form and show his original form. The Lord then exhibits his four-armed form at, and at last his original two-armed form. Upon seeing the Lord's beautiful human-like form, Arjuna becomes pacified. One who is engaged in pure devotional service can see such a form. Jai Shri Krishna Jai Shri Krishna Srimad Bhagavad Gita Summary of Chapter Number 12 Devotional Service Who is more perfect? Arjuna asks. The devotee worshipping and servicing the Lord's personal form or the transcendentalist meditating on the impersonal Brahma? Krishna replies, The devotee who fixes his mind on my personal form is most perfect. Because devotional service employs the mind and senses, it is the easy, natural way for an embodied soul to reach the supreme destination. The impersonal path is unnatural and fraught with difficulties. Krishna does not recommend it. In the topmost stage of devotional service, one's consciousness is totally fixed on Krishna. A step lower is the practice of regulative devotional service. Lower than that is karma yoga, renouncing the fruits of action. In direct processes of attaining, the supreme include meditation and cultivating knowledge. A devotee who is pure, expert, tolerant, self-controlled, equipoised, non-envious, free from a false ego, friendly to all living entities, and equal to friends and enemies, is dear to the Lord. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Summary 
of chapter number 13th, Nature, the Enjoyer, and Consciousness. Arjuna wants to know about Prakriti, nature, Purusha, the enjoyer, Kshetra, the field, Kshetragna, the knower of the field, Jnana, knowledge, and Greya, the object of knowledge. Krishna explains that the Kshetra is a conditioned soul's field of activity, the body. Within it reside both the living entity and the Supreme Lord, who are called Kshetragna, the nurse of the field. Jnana, knowledge, means understanding of the body and its nurse. Knowledge involves qualities such as humility, non-violence, tolerance, cleanliness, self-control, absence of false ego, and even-mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events. Greya, the object of knowledge, is a super-soul. Prakriti, nature, is the causes of all material causes and effects. The two Purushas, or enjoyers, are the living entity and the super soul. A person who can see that the individual soul and the super soul remain unchanged throughout various types of material bodies, they successfully inhabit and is said to possess the vision of eternity. By understanding the difference between the body and the nodes of the body and by understanding the process of liberation from material bondage, one reaches the supreme goal. Jai Shri Krishna Jai Shri Krishna Srimad Bhagavad Gita Summary of chapter number 14 the three modes of material nature. The total material substance is the source of the three modes of material nature. That is goodness, passion and ignorance. These modes compete in exerting their influence upon the conditioned soul. By observing the modes at work, we can understand that they are active, not we, and that we are separate. In this way, the influence of material nature gradually diminishes and we attain Krishna's spiritual nature. The mode of goodness illuminates. It frees one from all sinful reactions, but conditions one to a sense of happiness and knowledge. One who dies in the mode of goodness attains the higher planets. A person influenced by the mode of passion is plagued by unlimited desires for boundless material enjoyment, especially sex pleasure. To satisfy those desires, he is always forced to engage in hard work that binds him to sinful reactions and resulting in misery. A person in the mode of passion is never satisfied with the position or the position he has already acquired. After death, he again takes birth on earth among persons engaged in fruitive activities. The mode of ignorance means delusion. It fosters madness, indolence, laziness and foolishness. If one dies in the mode of ignorance, he has to take birth in the animal kingdom or the hellish worlds. A person who transcends the three modes is steady in his behavior, aloof from the temporary 
material body and equally disposed towards friends and enemies. Such a transcendental qualities can be achieved by full engagement in devotional service. Jai Shri Krishna Jai Shri Krishna Shrimad Bhagavad Gita Summary of Chapter Number 15th The Yoga of the Supreme Person The tree of this material world is but a reflection of the real tree, the spiritual world. Just as a tree's reflection is situated on water, the material reflection of the spiritual world is situated on desire and no one knows where it begins or ends. This reflected tree is nourished by the three modes of material nature. Its leaves are the Vedic hymns and its twigs are the objects of the senses. One who wants to disentangle himself from this tree must cut it down with the weapon of detachment and seek shelter of the Supreme Lord. Everyone in this world is fallible, but in the spiritual world, everyone is infallible. And beyond all others is the Supreme Person, Krishna. Everyone in this world is fallible, but in the spiritual world, everyone is infallible. And beyond all others is the Supreme Person, Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Summary of Chapter Number 16. The Divine and Demonic Natures. Two classes of created beings, the Divine and the Demonic, are endowed with different qualities. Godly men like Arjuna possess the godly qualities, charity, self-control, gentleness, modesty, forgiveness, cleanliness, austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, tranquility, fearlessness, freedom from anger, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, aversion to fault finding, compassion for all living beings, freedom for, from covetousness, and steady determination. Demonic qualities such as pride, anger, envy, rashness, arrogance, ignorance, impotence, uncleanliness, and improper behavior bind people in a network of illusion that makes them take birth again and again in demonic species of life. Unable to approach Krishna, the demonic gradually sink down to hell. Two kind of action, regulated and unregulated, ailed different results. A person who discards scriptural injections attains neither perfection nor happiness, nor the supreme destination. People regulated by scripture understand what duty is and what is not. They gradually attain the supreme destination by performing acts conducive to self-realization. Jai Shri Krishna Jai Shri Krishna Srimad Bhagavad Gita Summary of Chapter Number 17 The Divisions of Faith Arjuna asks, What mode of nature governs those who do not follow the principles of scripture but worship according to their own imagination? In reply, Krishna analyzes the different kinds of faith, food, charity, austerity, sacrifice, and penance, they mark the different modes of material nature. The three words Om, Tat, Sat 
are symbolic representations of the supreme absolute truth om indicates the supreme tat is used for getting free from material entanglement and sat indicates that the absolute truth is the objective of devotional service any sacrifice charity or penance performed without faith in the supreme is called asat im permanent jai shri krishna jai shri krishna shrimad bhagavad gita summary of chapter number 18th conclusion the perfection of renunciation arjuna asks krishna about the purpose of tyag that is renunciation and sanyas the renounced order of life krishna explains these and the five causes of action the three factors that motivate action and the three constituents of action he also describes action understanding determination happiness and work according to each of these three modes of material material nature when attains perfection by doing one's own work not another's as prescribed duties are never affected by sinful reactions thus one should work as a matter of duty without attachment or expectations of result one should never give up one's duty the higher platform of self realization is pure devotional service to krishna accordingly krishna advises arjuna to always depend on him work under his protection and be conscious of him if arjuna refuses to fight for krishna he will still be dragged into warfare as it is his nature as a kshatriya to fight nonetheless he is free to decide what he wants to do by krishna's grace arjuna's illusion and doubt vanish and he chooses to fight according to krishna's directions jai shri krishna